You're listening to the Rauha, daily guidance for seekers with Sheikh Faraz Rabbani. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Wa sallallahu wa sallam. Wa barak. Ala Sayyidina wa Nabiina wa Habibina wa Qurrati Ayunina Muhammad. Wa ala alihi wa ashabihi wa tabi'een. Wa tabi'een lahum bi ihsanin wa hudan. Ila yawmiddin. اللهم فقهنا في الدين وعلمنا التأويل والهمنا رشدنا يا رب العالمين الحمد لله in our sessions on the 40 hadiths on love for the sake of Allah from our daily rawha we have reached hadith number 15 and this is the hadith of Mu'adh ibn Anas radiyallahu ta'ala anhu annahu sa'ala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam an afdal al-iman so Mu'adh ibn Anas radiyallahu ta'ala anhu asked the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam regarding the best of faith and this is the best of faith meaning an afdali aw safi Al-Iman, the best of the qualities of faith. What are the best of the qualities of those who are faithful? So the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam responded. فَقَالَ sallallahu alayhi wa sallam أَن تُحِبَّ لِلَّهِ وَتُبْغِضَ لِلَّهِ وَتَعْمَلَ وَتُعْمِلَ لِسَانَكَ so, the question was, what is the best of faith? Afdalul Iman. And what is the answer? The Prophet ﷺ gave characteristics of conduct of those who have the best of faith. The first is, and tuhibba lillah, that you love for Allah. Mean, and what is, what is, Mahabba, love, is inclination. That is absolute. Right? Love is inclination that is absolute. Right? You incline to something, if you incline sufficiently, you like it. If you incline completely to something, that is called love. Likewise, that's why they define Mahabba is Meilun da'im is your complete inclination. Biqalbin right? ha'im, with a heart overcome. So, but that you love for Allah, which comes from inclining only to what is pleasing to Allah. Liking only that which is liked by Allah, loving only that which is beloved to Allah. Right? So, one's way of looking at the world is colored by one's faith. What is this world? This world is created by Allah as a test. In this, you are a responsible servant. What, what, where does your responsibility lie? In choosing the good for the sake of God. Leaving the bad for the sake of Allah, right? That is what, so this is what's entailed by slavehood to Allah. So you love for Allah and you hate for Allah. And the third is, and tu'mila lisanak, that you make your tongue work in remembrance of Allah, right? That you engage your tongue, you activate your tongue in remembrance of Allah. Because that is what will stir the qualities of faith required to love faithfully. Right? So that one's inclinations are faithful inclinations. One's likes are faithful likes. Our, our likes are faithful likes and our loves are faithful loves. 
So these are three comprehensive qualities. But this noble Sahabi, Sayyidina Mu'adh ibn Anas, he said, وَمَاذَا يَا رَسُولَ اللَّهِ What else, O Messenger of Allah? So he asked, what is the best of faith? So the Prophet ﷺ gave him three qualities of the best of faith. Now the Sahaba did not just ask about the good. Okay? They, especially the Sahaba who were, who had spent time with the Prophet ﷺ, they asked about virtue, about what is best. Ayyul okay. Islami Afdal. What what type of Islam is best? Right. Um, what actions are most beloved to Allah? Right. They'd ask about the highest matters, right. and that's what we should strive for. But we does. We don't find sufficiency in a little bit. Right? The, the believer who is sincere, as Allah SWT said, Man arad al akhirah wa sa'a laha sa'yaha. And whoever seeks the hereafter and strives for it, with the striving befitting it. Right? So the, the believer is trying to do the most they can. So he says, And what else, O Messenger of Allah? He, and so he said, Wa an tuhibba lin nasi ma tuhibbu lin nafsik. And that you love for people. All that you love for yourself. And that you dislike for them all that you dislike for yourself. Why? Because what is our understanding? Who am I? I am God's creation. I am a servant of God. I am needy. To God. I am in desperate need of God's mercy. What is anything else? It is, everything else is Allah's creation. Everything else, everyone else is a servant of God. Everyone else is needy. And everyone else is in need of divine mercy. The good that can be facilitated for them. Now Allah has chosen that there is mercy that is encompassing, that flows to his creation directly. And then there's mercy that flows to his creation by his wisdom and his creating through created means. So if you can be a means to, if you can be a means of mercy, right, you are a conduit of divine mercy to the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Which is why we know that it is the merciful who are shown mercy by the all-merciful. Right. So this is a fundamental aspect, not just of being good, but this is what is entailed by having a sound view of reality, of creation. And this is related by Imam Ahmad. Hadith number 16 on Amr ibn al-Jamuh radiallahu ta'ala anhu anna Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam aqal la yajidu al-abdu sariha al-iman hatta yubghida lillah wa yuhibba lillah. The Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that the, the servant does not find explicit faith, it does not find, sarih al-iman, literally explicit faith, manifest complete faith, right? because faith is an affirmation, right? faith is like a seed, but that seed does not bloom until certain qualities are found. Right? Until they love, they hate for Allah. And there are things that are odious to Allah. What are they? When ha anil. There's categories that are mentioned. Allah hates disbelief. He hates fusuk, 
all expressions of corruption, all that results in harm that spreads in creation, spiritual harm, worldly harm, social harm, personal harm, like fisk, corruption, right, is not just about doing something kind of not so good. Right? These are things that spread harm. What is fisk? Is al khuruj anil intidham. Right? Corruption is how it takes things out of the rightful order. Right? So disbelief, corruption, sin, and all sin is harm. Individual or social, material or spiritual, and wrongdoing, and dhulm, right? These are things that a believer hates, these qualities, right? Disbelief and its manifestations, corruption. sin and wrongdoing, injustice, until one hates for the sake of Allah. But hating for the sake of Allah entails responding to what's hateful in the sight of Allah with what is beloved in the sight of Allah. Right? So hating for the sake of Allah does not mean that you take a situation that is odious to Allah and you aggravate it. Which is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us not to mock the idols of others lest they mock Allah. And so it's a bad situation. People are worshipping idols. Not a good thing. However, how you respond to that, if you respond to it in a manner that makes things worse, you are culpable for that. Until one hates for the sake of Allah, right? But one's hating for the sake of Allah must be done in a manner that is restorative, that is healing. وَيُحِبَّ لِلَّهِ And so one loves for the sake of Allah. So each manifestation of good, one loves it and wishes for it to increase. Right? All manifestations of faith of virtue, of good, of mercy, of justice, of excellence, of beauty. Right? One loves it and one seeks for it to, to increase and sees what can I do to, su to support this. And this is where you see the believers that we admire, and the likes of Imam Zaid. There's no type of good that you see Imam Zaid supporting it in ways that you, you and I know and in ways that you and I would never imagine. Why? That's what faith entails. There's something of the good. Loving it for Allah doesn't just mean, oh, that's so nice. Right? You want loving something for the sake of Allah entails seeking good for it. And if it's already good, you want the basis of good is that it be increased. It's like one of the scholars, he, he was introduced to this person who in some, some martial arts was an eighth dawn or whatever degree, black belt. So Habib Qazim said to him, what would it take for you to become a ninth degree thing? He said, well, a lot of effort. He said, keep at it because you're benefiting people through this. Because he, he trains people in martial arts and so on. We reached the eighth stage of 10 or whatever. So he was, Habib Qazim said, well, if it's of the good, then you seek to perfect it, because it's something pleasing to Allah. If it's not, then don't do it. Right? فَإِذَا أَحَبَّ لِلَّهِ وَأَبْغَضَ لِلَّهِ إِسْتَحَقَّ الْوِلَايَةَ لِلَّهِ And then the Prophet ﷺ mentioned, right? so a servant does not reach manifest faith. Sarih right? al-Iman, until they hate for Allah and love for Allah. And then what's the consequence of this? The Prophet made it clear. And then 
if they do love for Allah and do hate for Allah, then they become deserving of electhood from Allah, wilaya from Allah. And they say, Al-Wali man tawalla Allah fatawallahu Allah. The Awali is someone who, as it, who chooses Allah, so Allah chooses them. Okay? They choose Allah above all else, actively, so Allah chooses them from amongst their creation with His favor, with His grace, with His love, with His drawing close, with His good pleasure, etc. And this is related by Imam Ahmad and Al Tabarani and others. Hadith number 17. An Aisha ta ummil mu'minin, radi Allahu ta'ala anha. Kalat, kala Rasulullahi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Thalathatun, ahlifu alayhinna. La yaj'alu Allahu lahu sahmun fil Islam. كَمَنْ لَا سَهْمَ لَهُ وَأَسْهُمُ الْإِسْلَامِ ثَلَاثَةَ الصَّلَاةُ وَالصَّوْمُ وَالزَّكَاءُ وَلَا يَتَوَلَّ اللَّهُ عَبْدًا فِي الدُّنْيَا فَيُوَلِّيهِ غَيْرَهُ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ So, وَلَا يُحِبُّ رَجُلٌ قَوْمًا إِلَّا جَعَلَهُ اللَّهُ تَعَالَ مَعَهُمْ so the Prophet said, the Messenger of Allah said, there are three that I bear witness upon them that Allah does not grant the one who has one share of them in Islam like the one who does not have no share of them. Right? That there's three things that if so, so anyone, if someone has any one share of them, they'll be completely distinct from someone who does not have a share of them, and a share, a sahm, right, is like a share in a company. Right, it's a part of a whole. That that there's three things. So the Prophet ﷺ made clear: well, Islam, wa'ashumul Islami thalatha. The shares of Islam are three. Islam, as we've seen before, is not made up of parts. Islam is that inward acceptance to submit to Allah as your Lord. Right? It's that inward su surrender that would entail accepting to submit. Right? So, but this has three there's three shares, there's three things that each of which will give you a great extent of the fruits of submission, of the perfection of submission. What are they? As-salatu wa sawmu wa zakah, prayer fasting and zakat. Now everyone has to perform these. The ulama explained to us that what is meant here is that having a share of these is that you have become of the people of prayer. Because the difference between praying and being of the people of prayer. Who are the people of prayer? The people of prayer are those who manifest the qualities of those whose prayers have been praised in the Qur'an. Those who, those who establish the prayer, which is they perfect the prayer in its outward performance and in its inward qualities of presence of heart and sincerity, etc. And as Ibn Atayla said, إِذْ لَيْسَ كُلُّ مُصَلِّنْ مُقِيمٌ For not everyone who prays establishes the prayer. Right? 
Establish the prayer for my presence, for my remembrance. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us, the Prophet said, pray as you have seen me pray. Right? So to be of the people of prayer. And we know in many hadiths that there are eight doors to paradise, each of which has people for it from one of the main virtuous acts. But the perfection of Islam, there's three components or three doorways to the, perfect, to, to the perfecting of one's iman, of Islam. The first is prayer. So what should one do? Why is this here? That if you want to acquire the qualities of those who are able to love for Allah, one of the doors to it is perfect your prayer. Perfect your fasting. Don't just merely fast, but have the higher degrees of fasting. Right? Do the, rec the sunnah fast, the recommended fasts, outwardly. But inwardly, gain the spiritual restraint. And in your fasting, right, um, that Imam al-Ghazali talks about the levels of fasting. So become of the people of fasting. Become of the people of zakat, who give their zakat with excellence, who don't delay their zakat, who give it with the inward qualities of giving, that you give with gratitude to Allah. You give with certitude with Allah. You give with gratitude to the person you're giving it to. You give with beholding that the person you're giving it to is doing you a favor because they are assisting you in fulfilling your duty and responsibility before Allah. And not to see that you're doing them a favor by giving them some fleeting worldly money. Right? To give your zakat to those most deserving to those of most benefit right so to, to be, be of the people of zakat of those who give their zakat early of those who give their zakat more than they need to give who and from the people of zakat is those who don't only give what is incumbent upon them which is the obligatory zakat but who are min ahli sadaqat of the people who above and beyond that give in charity right so, so you may have paid your zakat, but someone is deserving of zakat. You give them your sadaqat. You give them your voluntary charity. So you fulfill the zakat needs with your extra giving. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's messenger said, and Allah does not take, take on a servant in this life. لا يتولى الله عبدا في الدنيا Allah does not Choose a servant in this life and then allow them to be chosen by another in the next. Right? Allah does not take care of a servant in this life. Take care of them in what way? Take care of them in their being in a state of servitude to Him. Right? So, Right? That a sign that, you know, as Ibn Atayla says, a sign, they say, he, he, Imam Ibn Atayla says, that if you, if you want to see wh where your rank is with Allah, look at what He has placed you in and what He is busying you with. Okay? And if you find good, be grateful to God. So if Allah puts you in a situation where you're of the people of prayer, you're of the people of fasting, you're the people of these virtues, and you only become of their people if you love those actions, this is why it's from loving for Allah, Allah does not take care of a servant in this life and then leave them to be taken care of by another in the day, on the day of judgment where there's no one to take care of you but Allah. Right? That this is something that should be part of the glad tidings of the believer. Right, that if you, if you find yourself being of the people of good, of the people of prayer, the people of fasting, the people of zakat, or the other great doorways of good, of the people of knowledge, of the people of spiritual concern, of the people of service, of the different peoples of electhood that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mentioned, 
that Allah does not take care of it. How do you have it? It's from Allah. If Allah has granted you this good, Allah does not take care of a servant in this life and then leave them to someone else in the next. So have a good opinion of Allah. Be grateful to Allah for it. And that which will guarantee its preservation for you into the next life. And then the Prophet ﷺ said, وَلَا يُحِبُّ رَجُلٌ قَوْمًا إِلَّا جَعَلَهُ اللَّهُ تَعَالَى مَعَهُمْ And no person loves a people except that Allah Most High will make them with them. Which entails loving all the people of good in general. But find your people. Right? Find your people. Right? We know, we looked at that hadith that the souls were arranged as groups on the day of resurrection. There are people of light that you fit with. So find those people. Love the good everywhere, but be with people of good. Because no one loves a people except that Allah will make, make them Make that person with those people. One is ultimately the next life, but also if your love is true, then what is it that brings people together in this life? It is love. It is love. Right? A lot of times we have transactional relations with our teachers. I have a, someone says, I have a sheikh. What do you do? I ask, ask, ask him my spiritual problems. But do you love them? Well, they help me out. I, Make dua for them once not. No. Our religion is not a transactional religion. The Prophet ﷺ did not just come out from his house and say, Salam alaikum, I have a new revelation come. The Sahaba didn't just go, okay, tell us, okay, we'll, we'll see you next week. Right? There, there has to be love. Right? Um, and no, no person loves the people except that Allah makes them with them. And we have to nurture love you know, for our teachers, love for the people of knowledge, the people of remembrance, the people of service, so that we can be of the, the people who are in the circles of mercy and light, in the circles of those who are beloved to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because people will be gathered in groups on the day of resurrection. Rahul Imam Ahmad bi asanida jayyida or bi isnadin jayyida. And we'll take One more. Uh, hadith, which hadith number 18. Abi, an Abi Umamat radiallahu ta'ala anhu qal, qal Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, ma ahabba abdun abdan lillahi illa akrama rabbahu azza wa jal. That no servant, the Prophet ﷺ said, no servant loves another servant except that they are honoring Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and thereby being honored by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Why? Because who is the person that you are loving? Their servant of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So it is part of the gratitude for the blessing of Allah's creating this nexus of worldly relations, right? whether it be family or friendship or faith or humanity. Right? And even beyond that, of being God's creation, except that you, you are thereby honoring Allah. Because who are they? هَذَا خَلْقُ اللَّهِ This is Allah's creating. Hadha Abdullah, this is a servant of Allah. And there you, you are honoring Allah by it, and Allah will honor you by it. Which is why we were looking in Kitab al Athkar, and before traveling, there's many sunnahs before you travel, before you even think about praying istikhara about either whether to travel or for your travel to be blessed. And one of them in the old days, because you travel on animals and accompanied by animals. Is Imam Nawawi said, before you travel, you should learn or review 
the adab related to proper treatment of animals and the rights of animals and how to fulfill the best interests of the animal, the maslaha, the best interests of the animals in the proper way. Because giving the right of the animal is just to fulfill your obligation. You've not really done any good by doing that. That's just, you're, you're, you are taking care not to be a wrongdoer. Okay? That's like you put on your pants and say, okay, I'm not naked, but you're still undressed. Okay? But just relatively undressed. So this is, yeah, this is part of loving for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, right? To love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's servants, to love his creation is part of honoring their Lord. We'll stop there. Wa sallallahu ala sayyidina wa nabina wa habibina Muhammad wa alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. Walhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Thank you for listening to the Rauha, Daily Guidance for Seekers with Sheikh Faroz Rabbani. Help Seekers Hub give light to millions around the world by supporting us through monthly donations by going to seekershub.org slash donate. Your donations are tax deductible in the U.S. and Canada.